like a, an idea and a vision and you can kind of execute it, right? Yes, sir. Um, so tell me about how you got set up where you're working now. Um, you said it was an instructor of yours that and you're working in his basement? Yeah, basically, yeah. Um, I went to school. I graduated last year in September from the SAE Institute of Vancouver. And my teacher, Braden Dukowski, um, you know, he's one of my Pro Tools teachers. And I, you know, stayed in touch with him after I graduated and whatnot. Mm-hmm. And he recently just shouted me out and said, hey, man, you know, my... My studio and my spot's basically finished. He's been, you know, it's been like a labor of love for him for the last year or so. Yeah. And now that it's finally operational, yeah, he's invited me over one day to come check it out. And I instantly just fell in love with the setup. It's, you know, very, very, not only gear wise, but it's just very, very comfy, very cozy. And, you know, the fact that, you know, having him being my teacher is also kind of like a little little foot in the door there too you yeah know? <laughs> yeah that's great so he's yeah. been like a mentor for you hey oh yeah definitely mm-hmm. like all, a lot of the teachers from my school um like sam ryan uh mike rogerson you know it's just it's to name a few they but Braden's really you know he, if you meet the guy you'll totally know what i'm talking about he's just got such a warm bubbly personality really like was very happy to take me in and you know just let me start working out of it right from scratch but um Basically, I like to you know backtrack even further. You know, when I first, I, I'm gonna give you a little like, lowdown of my history. So, I basically the first time I ever really started doing anything music production wise was about five years ago. Mm-hmm. I hijacked my brother's shitty laptop and found and ordered a, a shitty microphone off of Amazon and started recording my shitty SoundCloud rapper friends. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> and so. You know, we were all just playing around at the time, right? You know, have knowing I basically no idea. I was starting in audacity, right? Just basically just trying to record anything. And, you know, they all kind of came and went. You know, some of them stuck around for a bit and we were working. And then, you know, just kind of everyone was like going off to school or doing what, this and that. But, you know, that kind of just sparked something for me, you know? Like, it's like I instantly felt a passion, like with a microphone and. Yeah, uh, you know, for the next few years, I just kept at it, you know, slowly just accumulating, you know, more gear and more knowledge. And then uh, in January of 2018, I just decided to pull the trigger. I'm like, look, I, you know, I don't want to have this be on the, uh, on the back burner anymore. Mm-hmm. And so I really, you know, made the choice to go to school and, you know, to dedicate myself fully to this. And, you know, of course, you know, it's the best decision I've ever made, right? Mm-hmm. And hey, from there, you know, I've just been working, you know, producing you know artists you know like like sean and jody here um i've worked with other artists like scotty jones and you know porter actually shout out to porter because he's the one who hooked me up with you yeah he's the one who set this up yeah big shout out to my man porter um worked with boslin um and just you know like a, a plethora of local artists um but yeah basically just been working at it for the last few years and just building up my business and my brand and just trying to network and shake some hands. You know? Yeah, those are all super important things. Definitely, the, the for sure. Things that I overlooked for a long time. You know, just working myself to death in my bedroom in isolation. Yeah, um, been there. <laughs> uh, it, it wasn't until I started reaching out to people more and getting out. You know, started doing the podcast things like this and meeting the community that mm. that's where I really started to grow and and. Word and share techniques that I was learning with other people and ask questions and just being, you know, humble. Mm. Um, I've been, because I've been doing this for about 15 years now since I first like picked up a MacBook and was fucking with GarageBand. Like, you know, it's been about 15 years for me and it wasn't really until the last like three, four years where I feel like I've really made strides. Yeah, You know, those first 10 plus years was just spinning my wheels kind of doing it like i said there, on yeah. my own in isolation and i haven't really grown uh, in in big ways since um since i started realizing like the le- i actually you know the more i learn the less i realize i knew if that makes sense you know what i mean that's so true <laughs> and i mean you know like i feel like a a big part of it you know not only just for producers like for artists for any kind of person in the industry is just the humbleness right mm-hmm. learning kind of just to put your ego aside and just you know just do your dirt right and yeah. just kind of learn and whatnot i really relate to that because it's all like all about you know networking and making relationships in the industry you know and 
yeah. <laughs> yeah, and in you know realizing that there's a lot of different ways to do one thing. Mm. You know, like I'm always curious about what's on people's vocal chains. You know, totally. Like, there's a million different plugins and a million different combinations and ways you can use it. You know, to get X Y Z result, right? Um, yeah. And and to be kind of stuck to one way and not be curious about how other people are doing it or is there a way I can improve it oh, or is man. there a way is there am I doing something wrong like so I've just been got, I've just gotten really big on um asking questions and reaching out more and just trying to expand um I recently subscribed to uh the mix with the masters uh web series excellent resource um, for sure which is a little pricey but yeah you know, I'm making. Well, it's you know, an investment for it's, sure. It's an it's an investment. Yeah, uh, you know, the studio's going well. I've got money and things like that. Fuck it, dive dove dove into that. Yeah, and, man, like that's like porn for engineers. Oh, bro, I mean, I've just <laughs> <laughs> I've just seen like just the the snippets on YouTube. I'm like, oh yeah. man, so it's a straight tease for sure. <laughs> yeah, but um, yeah, like going back a little bit. That's is what you're saying how just like always interested in like learning about you know what people have on their vocal chains i find like there is like okay when i graduate in fall like for the, like the, the the next few f three four months after that i just stopped learning new things i was mm. like okay i found mm. something really cool mm. and i know what i'm doing and then i just kept doing that but for some weird reason my sound wasn't changing wasn't getting yeah. better you yeah. know and like you as soon as you put yourself in a box like that that's that's where you plateau you know like you have to if you're really dedicated you know artists producers everyone in any trade or craft you have to put in an effort to learn every day and to try new things and to oh, always yeah. expand you know oh, like yeah. especially like let's say if i'm just in ableton you always have like a template set up just to get started I try at least once a week to just tear that down and build it up again because mm. as soon as I get comfortable with that template, things just stay stagnant. You know, you always have to keep pushing right. yourself to do new things and get creative and learn. Learning, you never stop learning. Learning's the fun part. It's the yeah, rewarding part. Exactly. You know, I I fucking I when I have a breakthrough moment in here, like yeah. I get up and do like push ups, and I'm just like break, <laughs> like breakthrough, and I go home and like yap my wife's ear off about it like i had a breakthrough tonight again like yeah. it's, just, it's exciting like it's like i'm 10 years old like you know discovering my first boner or something yeah. you know what i mean it's like <laughs> holy just shit something with jacking off <laughs> like, for the first time yeah like, like what is this oh i learned you know I uh, put distortion on the low end of the 808 and it came together like yeah you know just Things like that, never stopping to learn. Let um, a big hero of mine is Dave Pinsato, and I talk about oh, him man. a lot because he's you know he's got to be pushing seventy, and he's still yeah. every he's a legend. He puts out videos regularly of of like a new thing I learned, <laughs> like yeah. a new thing you learned. What do you yeah, mean? Yeah, like, his age. You know, he's, <laughs> he's still learning, right? You know. Yeah, yeah. So uh, it's great. Um, I I just love I love being an engineer. I love mm. that I found something that's like like a passion you know you know as overused as that it that word or that term is but it's like just so excited to come in here like i know you are to go to your spot and just like you know what what's going to happen today like what magic are we going to have today what what exactly. am i going to learn you know yeah and it's just i find you know like i'm sure you have that you know producers have there's no in between it's always like a thinking oh man how much money can i make right now if i sell all my stuff <laughs> and then there's the fuck yeah let's go make a hit you know you yeah. get that excitement feeling yeah. there's no in between yeah and it's just it's interesting as to what sparks that fuck yeah moment mm. right whether it's finding a new vocal processing trick or just whatever trying new things you never tried before and it's just it's an amazing feeling for sure. And I feel like you're always kind of chasing the dragon, you know, like, the, yeah. like a junkie with the needle, you know, you're always, like, <laughs> you're always like trying to chase that moment. And, and then you're, and then you'll hit your low and you'll be like, Oh my God, let's start, let's go on Craigslist and start listening shit. And then you're right back up yeah. and it's repeat for 70 years. Right. Yeah. Oh no. I mean, I, 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 I totally know what you mean about having those low moments too. Oh, like man. I haven't got to the point where I, where I've considered like, you know, selling my Genelex or anything like that. But yeah, I definitely have times where I'm, yeah, like really doubting myself as well. So there's those low, those low times as well. And it's like, 
like I'm not getting better quick enough or, yeah. or I'll hear something that someone else mixed and be like, fuck, that vocal sounds so much better than mine. Like Engineer jealousy. You know, engineer right. jealousy. Yeah. <laughs> I suffer from that big time. Um, well, I think we all so do. So I think that's part of being a creative person though. Yeah. Being like very, really sensitive and just having like extreme highs and lows, you know what I mean? Constantly up and down. Um, Definitely. But it's what those, those low moments when, when you just like, you tough through it and then the next day, like we just said, you know, you have a breakthrough and then it, that's just what keeps you going, you know? Oh, exactly, um, yeah. Chasing the dragon. So. Yeah, you gotta chase that dragon for sure. And yeah, man, like it's, it's just interesting and you know, like I got, okay, I'm gonna just like derail a little bit here. I just like, Thank you for having me on the show, by the way. Like, it's a, it's Dude, definitely pleasure. a privilege and an honor to be here. You know, I've never been to Two Track Entertainment before, but I, I love your setup, man. This is pretty, it's pretty crisp. Thanks, man. Yeah. So when did you guys, when did you found Two Track? When did this all start? Interviewing um, you now. So Denton Milton, he's the owner. Um, you didn't, I don't know. know if you've met him before. He's not here tonight. Mm, Anyhow. No, probably not. He's the one who, he, he owns the spot. Um, word, word, word. and about four years ago, he put out an ad to Nimbus, mm. um, and where I was an alumni and I get those uh, shout out to Nimbus, by the way, big time. Um, and Christina for all the amazing work that she does, um, hooking up alumni with jobs in the city. I mean, she's, she's a saint. So um, I responded to an ad, basically, that Nimbus put out. Um, right on, man. Two track looking for, I think it was like local hip hop studio looking for assistant engineer. And I was like, there you go. I was like, okay, this, I had one of those like moments where I just, I was like, this was made for me. Like I knew, I knew, I, I knew it, um, but I had extreme like self doubt. Mm. And I was like about to go on vacation, leaving the country. And I was making all these excuses in my head, like, oh, they're never going to pick me. Like, I'm yeah. leaving. <laughs> da, 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 da. You know, just hundred reasons. Backstepping in self doubt. Yeah. Um, but I eventually, you know, I brushed up my resume and, and, and submitted it. And, um, you know, sure enough, like, I basically got the job like before the interview was over. There you go. Denton and I totally clicked and, and, you know, we talked about our philosophies and our backgrounds and, and, and it just like, it seemed to like work right away, you know? And then from there, like I started, uh, assisting, coming in, you know, watching a lot, learning from him. I've learned a ton from him. My game has improved tremendously since I've been working uh, here. So Thanks, I'm man. super grateful for that. Like he's been a mentor for me, right? Like, um, and then eventually once I learned, you know, how to run the, how to, you know, the patch bay that we have, it was one or two things. It, you see, you saw that gigantic console downstairs. She's we, beauty. It's, we don't use most of it. Yeah. <laughs> if for, for hip hop, it's like Mostly a YouTube in the beat in a, in a vocal, yeah. in a vocal. So yeah, like five tracks, maybe. <laughs> yeah. yeah. No. It's a gigantic steering wheel, but um, yeah. Yeah. So yeah, learn that, learn, learn, you know, how we likes to set up pro tools and just the mm -hmm. whole workflow. And then eventually started taking my own sessions and, you know, three and a half years, four years later, like we built this new room, which we're sitting in now. Nice. Um, everything in this room is mine, like from my own home studio that I have accumulated, you know, for since I started doing this, right? Yeah. Like my desk, everything, the the monitors, the everything. So boom, moved it in, had all the XLRs, had everything. We just, you know, built these, we literally built these walls ourselves and here we are nice. like, got it up and running right away so it's just yeah it's been incredible um we 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 share clients we share knowledge we share a lot of things it's just like a really good chemistry here sounds like um, a really good like family team vibe you guys have going oh here. yeah absolutely and then <clears throat> we have jose and natasha who you just met yeah, outside yeah. they do phenomenal work for us like with all the visual stuff um help us you know, rent out the white space um, yeah. where people, you know, once they get, they come in, record Denton and I, or Kellen, our other engineer do a mix for them. And then they can do the video 
all under one it's roof. One stop shop, baby. Um, which Come is amazing. <laughs> yeah. I think that's so. really, really fantastic how you guys have like a whole multimedia setup here. You know, you can now be like, oh, you need a video done? Well, we'll just come over to the next room. We'll hook you up with my boy. And oh, yeah. Yeah, that's just crazy. You know, you're not just focusing on just recording and mixing and mastering. You know, you're trying to offer the whole the whole shebang, right? Mm -hmm. And that's not, I have, I rarely see a lot of places like that that can offer that kind of thing, you know, because usually it's just all, I'll hook you up with my, my buddy and, you mm -hmm. know, do this and that. Mm -hmm. But it's just, yeah, this is really... This is definitely a team a team play for sure right here. I like this. It's cool it's because good. way before I met Denton and before I started working here, I tried to do something similar on my own. Um, but I just didn't have the commitment from from all of the from everyone on the team, you know what I mean? Um and then I and then I came full circle to being here and it without even trying, like it just all kind of fell into place. It's mm. crazy. Just by never stopping, just by following the dragon. And then one thing led to the next. And then, you know, I'll stop myself and be like, what we have here is what I tried to do 10 years ago. Like, mm. but I got back to the same place. It's just weird, man. So I don't know if it's, you know, we what call it what you want to call it, but, um, it's uh, it feels good. It's just kind of, it it just works, you know. So, I'm super grateful. Um, I want to know more about about school for you though. Like, what was that like? Um, it was a lot of sleep deprivation. <laughs> I'll tell you that. Yeah. <laughs> Basically, uh, I started school in January of 2018, and at the same time, I was like, I had no plan of how to keep myself like employed at anything because mm. i just kind of had in the back of my mind oh it's fine you know you'll just you'll do it on the fly you know sell beats do this and that and then i but for three weeks i was like it was working and all of a sudden i'm like oh my god i'm like i'm gonna die i don't have any money you know i'm gonna like i can't put my, i gotta keep a car on the road to get to school it's a north van right and so i i used to work at starbucks in high school so i went back there um working part-time while going to school i work i went to school one to five, every, or Monday to Friday, right? But I'd start work at 5 a.m., work till noon, go to school, stay at school till 10, get home at 12, stay up till one, mm -hmm. and get up at four. And it was, I would do that for about nine months. And like, I looked like I was 30 by the time I was done. But um, that's, the, that's the grind. That's the hustle of it for sure. But as far as like, um, as, our, as our class... It's an amazing class because our intake, our Jan the January intake, before it was called, before they uh, were bought out and were rebranded as the SAE Institute, that was the Harborside Institute of Technology. So oh, okay. we were the okay. first intake to be the first SAE class. So it was kind of like a wow, you know, like we're the first kind of thing. And mm -hmm. it was just, and you know... The, all of my teachers, the campus director, Brian, he's a G, shout out Brian. And um, they all, you know, always said, oh, you guys were just such like, we've never quite had a class. Like, you, and you know how your, your band comes to your city and they're like, no city has ever rocked as hard as Vancouver. Yeah, yeah, and I just yeah, thought they yeah. were just kind of, you know, like honey dicking me a little bit. Yeah. <laughs> but no, they actually like, I still talk to them. I still talk to the students and they're like, yeah, we still even talk about because it, it was just like so many switched on focused people in our class. It's from so many different walks of life, and it was just the chemistry was there for sure, and it was just it was just amazing, you know, being able to. I remember the first day I got the studio, like it was just like oh my god, it was just like salivating, mm -hmm. you know, just like getting jumping in there, and like it's daunting. It's a it's so it's so exciting. It's so daunting because you know I'm like a you know first term student just kind of learning how to patch stuff and kind of getting signal flow down. Yeah. But it was just like such a crazy feeling. And it's just, it's just crazy to know from like this time last year, I was just, you know, getting my feet wet with actually, you know, walking into a studio and working it. And now just working out of multiple studios mm -hmm. and it's, it's just crazy. It's just a really cool feeling. And I feel like the, one of the best ex parts and, you know, I got from going to SAE was not only, knowing how to you know run a studio and just like learning mixing techniques and this and that but just you know having the confidence to do it mm -hmm. and just shaking hands like i've like met so many people there made so many connections and you know i'll say it time and time again it's all about you know networking and you know building long-lasting relationships in this industry you know i still call people who i've just you know 
ran into in the hallway you know i have the people coming over and playing guitar you know at my house the other like you know a few weeks ago and just it's just cool like people who i just thought i'd never see again you know i'm still working with them mm-hmm. and it's just i've made so many friends there and it's just really really fantastic and yeah i mean like it's, it's Shout out SAE, man. Yeah, that's yeah, that's all really amazing stuff. Um, and it sounds really similar to to my experience as well oh, when I'm I was sure, in school. Yeah. Um, what was the name of your program, and what was it like? What was the focus of it? Was it more like production? Was it, you know, beat making? Was it mixing? Like, was it a combination? Well, it's a, it was actually um, the introductory course. There, it's it's about every. It's an introduction to basically every field of audio. Okay. So we have you know like first terms like Pro Tools one hundred and one, and then you start learning because they're an Ableton certified school. So we start learning Ableton, mm. and then we have uh, music theory, yeah, and traditional songwriting, and then you know jump into second term. You know there's post production audio and learning uh, Pro Tools for video games. Oh yeah. And uh, just you're learning so many different things, and of course, and of course, you know they kind of like at towards the end of the year they have more of the actual mixing and yeah. hands on stuff but it's sure. really it's really just yeah like you're dipping your toe in every corner of audio right but you know me coming from a hip hop background i already kind of had an idea of what i wanted to do yeah. so you know i still you know like checked out each thing but i kind of you know you have a you have a goal an end goal in mind right so yeah. you're always going to kind of be working towards that and so what I was really like really loved about that school is not only like how pro tools heavy they were and just and how you know I already was I was already using Ableton prior to going there so that was you know such a step up just not being cuz I, I don't know have you ever used Ableton before? Lina? No. No. Oh, it's it's a very steep learning curve up front. Mm. A lot of people say it's like really hard to get your head around it at first. Um but it's just it was that's basically what I was really focused in was just learning how to produce in Ableton and kind of finish in Pro Tools, yeah, and just work with vocalists and that's kind of my my niche. So you guys are learning like signal flow, mm. microphone techniques, like yes, all the stuff required to basically make a record. I guess yeah. at the end of the day, um, yeah. Was it more like DAW focused or more because um, at Nimbus like you know, they, we learned how to align a tape machine and we learned, you know, how yeah. to use an SSL and shit like that, which I haven't done since. Mm. So a lot of that shit was really great at the time, but yeah. I did, I don't use any of it anymore. Yeah. It's all about um, what, you know, what you have around you. Um, yeah. Uh, as far as mostly, I'd say it was mostly DAW oriented, oriented yeah. because, uh, you know, we didn't have a, a tape machine or anything. Right. I'd love to learn how to align a tape machine. That sounds really, really fun. Um, and as far as like, we have a, we have a small Trident, uh, analog, um, console, which, which we, yeah, which we experienced, you know, um, but yeah, I would say it was ma- mainly DAW oriented, yeah. but, um, a lot of the stuff I kind of learned too, was just like studio etiquette mm-hmm. and yeah, just, that's big. Yeah. yeah just, really you know, big. how to work with an artist and, you know, I, I think it, I've said this in other in other other times. It's a really great interview. I remember one time I brought my my boy Young Ness. Shout out Young Ness. Um, to I was gonna go producing a record for him at the time, and it, we were kind of coming to a standstill. And like the session was kind of you know like just we're coming to get into some roadblocks and getting a bit of writer's cramp that kind of thing. Mm-hmm. And I had my my boy um DeAndre uh, DeAndre Grant, who's an amazing effects um, editor and video editor. And he was he was kind of taking behind the scenes uh, shots of the session and whatnot, but he had a gimbal. I think that's what we call it. But it's basically just like a steering wheel from a car where you where you mount the camera in the middle. Okay. And so I just couldn't get I couldn't get the energy out of this. I just like yeah. I don't know what it was. So we just wasn't feeling it. So I I'm like okay I'm coming in there one sec. I gave him the steering wheel just to and so I'm like okay now why don't you pretend like you're in a music video and now then he started just you know you know skirt skirting around yeah. just jumping yeah. around in the booth and stuff and that was just like the best takes I've ever gotten out of him. So I just love how like I honestly like would be down to take like a psychology course. Yeah. To to like be a music producer because it's just so like how to get into people's heads and you know bring that emotion out of them which is just so vital because you can have like you can have a great mix and have the beat you have a great sounding you know composition and whatnot but if it's just you know the emotion's not there it's not there exactly man it's so important it does and it doesn't have to be 
It can be like the opposite too. Like I've heard stories of producers intentionally making the artists like really mad or like yeah. getting something that's going to make them angry. So they'll like shred the next guitar solo take or whatever. Oh, totally. So not just to get the energy up and make you have fun if you're tired, but like whatever emotion that record calls for um, is, yeah, that's a skill. That is a skill. Um, mm. One of the things that um, I found huge was um, the music business program that I did at Nimbus. They had a, it was essentially like a psychology portion mm. to that, um, which was all about like, um, how to give feedback to an artist, you know, yeah. how to approach what we just talked about, you know, um, emotions and, and personalities and relationships. Uh, if, if you're working with a band, like mm. how to keep the chemistry, um, you know, how to deal with band pe bandmates fighting and stuff and yep. how to be, how to like stay in charge and be the producer. Cause the produ the producer is like the coach yeah. of the team, the, the director of the movie, right? Like, exactly. Yeah. And you um, have to manage people. Like it's management is something else for sure. You know, like, and yeah, I find it's really, it's really hard to, you know, like try and keep sessions rolling sometimes. Yeah. And, you know, if it's just, you know, I don't know if people are just like, oh, like the energy is going down or if people are kind of like having creative differences and you definitely, yeah, you definitely just want to try and, you know, squash that out as, as quickly as possible. Um, but it's, yeah, it's also hard to keep it fun and, you know, keep it exciting, keep everyone entertained and, you know, keep, keep the morale up of the session and it's. That's yeah, it's a really um underrated skill I find, you know, like yeah, you definitely and you another thing too, you definitely like you have to be likable as a producer, <laughs> right? You have to you can like, like it's like you can you can show someone all your credentials, all your all your catalog and all your mixes and this and that, but if they just think you're a weird fuck, like yeah. they don't want to work with you. Oh, big time. It's just like you have to just click with people like you're saying, you know, like when you you had the job before you, the interview was over, you indented, and, uh, clicked. Yeah, right. And you know that's just you can tell. You know, like you can just tell, like when you do chemistry with the person, the second, like you, the first five minutes you walk in and that kind of thing, right? The the biggest, yeah, it's one of the biggest parts of production and being a producer that has nothing to do with music. Oh yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You don't need to know how to play a scale. Yeah, you just need to know how to be approachable and likable and, yeah. and easy to work with and yeah oh man it's uh but at the same time you gotta you gotta overstated. stay in charge and you can't let people walk over you mm -hmm. in a session you mm -hmm. know like I, uh that's uh, like when i was first starting out you know audacity days laptop days mm -hmm. uh, bedroom producing days right you know i just have all some of my homies come over and just like have the gang come through you know, and and plus two, you know, when everyone's like roasted, it's a little harder to manage people, right? <laughs> yeah. And you know, like I was like, I wasn't as vocal back then. You know, I would say, oh, um, I think we should move this part over here instead. And they're like, oh no, I don't like that. But I'm like, okay, oh sure, mm -hmm. sure, sure. Just trying to you know keep trying to like not make a make a fuss or anything. But you know, now and. I don't know when exactly I kind of learned that it was pretty quickly after that, but you know, you just kind of learn like, look, you kind of put your foot down. You don't, don't you have to be an asshole about it, yeah. but just be assertive and say, look, it's like, I, I believe we should do this and it'll make the record sound better. Trust me on this. You know, mm -hmm. it's just, yeah, it's all about, you learn as you go. Yeah. I find, you know, and oh, it's yeah. just, yeah, you definitely have to be very, how you have to be focused and very on point and, know what you're doing and that kind of thing you know a lot of the guys that are coming to you are they um like experienced w with the studio experience <laughs> or are they coming in like as first timers or like i work with a lot of uh, a, lot a lot of, of your first clients? timers and whatnot yeah. um i do however you know i've worked with the people who like who have you know very much so been in studios and know how it goes mm -hmm. and they know the terminology which is really nice you know <laughs> the like language yeah yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah and it's just yeah it's really nice when you have someone who's even if they're not like you know a veteran if they know how to communicate stuff to you or yo can you make me sound like i'm in a big room oh so you want me to turn some more reverb up for yeah. sure yeah. yeah or just yeah. um yeah. uh but yeah you know it's kind of like a 
a, like a bit of this and a bit of that as far as experience with people, you know, like, um, I remember definitely starting off in the beginning, you know, I was working with like pretty much people who have never been in front of a microphone before, but, um, my clients who I was with today, um, uh, ZZ and, uh, Jody, a uh, Preezy sound, they, the first time I linked up with them back uh, in the spring or something like earlier this year, they've never been in front of a microphone. They right. had no idea what they were doing. Right. And I was like, and they told me that before they came, and I, like five minutes before they came. And I was just like, hell yeah, okay, let's, you know, here we go, right? Yeah. But we just clicked, right? Mm-hmm. And it's going back to, you know, talking about that chemistry you have with people, right? And just being able to kind of, you know, put your ego on the side, have an open mind, and just listen to advice and instruction really helps um, uh, your producers and whatnot. And, you know, by the end of the day, you know, we they, were, they we had an eight hour session booked, and they wanted to. I don't know, they were like, "Oh, let's get like four songs done, let's bang them out." We pretty much spent the whole day just working on one, and you know, we just like we we wrote we song wrote, and we just basically took it, the thing from like a demo idea to just a finished record with like a little interlude skit with like you know like in between and just a bunch of really tailored stuff mm. that you just we wouldn't have gotten if you just booked two hours, right? Something like you know. Oh yeah, man. Because it's just I'm sure you have you know. You have that all the time where people, there's there's artists, and especially when you're an independent artist, you know, you are the label, you are funding yourself, right? So right. you got to be wise with, you know, your studio time. And, you know, people come through and they want to be efficient. You know, they want to get um, multiple songs done, get them done, let's move. But then there's also a time when you work for a mix on for a couple weeks or so, <laughs> and it's just, it just shows, right? It shows like, It shows how much time you put into it and, you know, yeah, I mean, you know, sometimes you can't rush perfection, right? I think uh, in my experience, the, it's the the artists that have been doing it longer. They recognize that um, that it takes a long time to do a record. Oh, totally. Um, you know, I this yeah. this is a, this is this comes up pretty often. Um, you know, people wanting to book a session and try and hammer out four songs Mm -hmm. and then put them on SoundCloud that same night. Yeah. Um, and I think that, you know, that's just naive. Yeah. Um, It's doable, but it won't yield your best result. That's some of the time, you know? Yeah. And you know, we're looking at, we're looking at our, our heroes, our Travis Scott's and futures and young thugs and Drake's and stuff. And we're only seeing the finished product, but we're not seeing that they slept in the studio for four nights straight. Like tip of the iceberg kind of thing, right? Yeah, exactly. The tip of the iceberg. So, um, that's one thing that I try really hard to, uh, you know, to, to, to reinforce Mm. in the most polite professional way to, to newer artists is like, okay, you've booked two hours tonight. Yeah. There's no way we're gonna get through three different beats. I mean, if you've got yeah. like a hook idea you want to lay down on yeah. three beats, maybe. But uh, there's no way I can I can even do a rough mix for, for you for, for yeah. three songs in two hours. So yeah, let's start with one. Um, this other one, you've got some great stuff here. There's some good ideas. Um, it still sounds like a freestyle. Why don't you take this home? Yeah, yeah. Go over the lyrics, find some melodies, ideas in that freestyle, and and refine it a bit, and then come back and see me. You know, exactly. I'm sure the same, like the same. You you've obviously know, like the same goes with mixing, right? You know, you'll like, you'll have a, you'll let's say you're spending the night mixing something, and then you're like, okay, I'm gonna sleep on it, and then we'll check how it sounds the next day. And you're like, whoa, you know, like you just completely change stuff, or you know, for mm. the most part, it's good. You know, it varies, but. You know, that was like that was like a big thing I learned when I was like first starting was don't post to SoundCloud the night of. <laughs> you know, just kinda like sleep on it, right? Yeah. And especially like especially when it's like it's you know, paid client work. You obviously I love being able to just listen to it the next day. Like I like I always tell them like you'll have a better I'll yield a better result if you if I can have like a two day turnaround time instead of just you know, doing it in one day. I mean, percent. yeah, you know, you always like, you can add, you add things, you take away things, you fine tune things. And it's just, and the same goes for, you know, the creative side, you know, for, if you're, you know, beat making, um, songwriting, you know, doing this and that sleep on it, you know, like you check it out the next day, maybe the, that hook you wrote was trash and you didn't realize it because, you know, you just burned in the car. And then, like, you know, I'm sure you've heard the, you've heard the term, you know, write drunk, edit sober, right? Mm, yeah. 
Uh, not so eloquently as that, but <laughs> I, I get what you're saying for yeah, sure. Yeah, yeah. bro. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, yeah it's all about yeah. just like, don't rush things necessarily, you know, just like take your time and perfect something. But that being said, you know, don't spend a year putting out like a single, right? Just mm -hmm. because it's never good enough, you mm -hmm. know? And, you know, I've like, I've ran, I'm sure you've got ran to that as well. Oh, yeah. Yeah. It's like, <laughs> yeah. Especially like, uh, I remember back in the day, I've, when I was, when I was actually rapping myself, I put out my first EP and it took me so long to do it just because it was me. It was me on that record. And I was like, it's not good enough. I have to do this, redo it, redo it, redo it. And I finally put it out. And then I was like, oh, wow, I hate rapping. Like, it's just <laughs> so awful. And like, yeah. and that's right there is kind of when I learned that I wanted to produce records instead of being on them, you know, because I just enjoyed the engineering and production standpoint of it that I was like, oh, okay, I'm not really cut out to be a recording artist, but... Yeah, and, and, you know, like, that's that's a really big thing, too, you know, just, like, self-awareness, right? Just learn what you are. It doesn't mean, like, oh, it's like, I'm not going to be a rapper, so I should stop. You just don't, let, let's say, like, you don't necessarily have to do, like, a really hard gang-style kind of genre of rap. Try something else. I don't know, just, like, be true to yourself as far as, you know, what you want to portray to your audience. Like, don't... There'll be something you're not. And that's just one thing I always tell people I'm working with, you know, if you're not like actually moving bricks and stuff, you probably shouldn't be rapping about that. It's just mm. like a general rule of thumb, <laughs> you know? Um, yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 It's all, it's about, it's about enjoying the process. Yeah. Hugely because um, my, you know, I, I also used to, rap and that's how i got into this i think and, every producer started um, rapping yeah a lot <laughs> like a lot right enjoyed. and and then Ugh. uh but i'm not mad at my past i'm not yeah. mad that i did that because it got me here and i had to do all that and try it out to realize that i like engineering more oh, and yes. i wouldn't have discovered engineering i don't think if i hadn't been the guy that was rapping, recording, mixing, and mastering, and doing his own album cover. Like, I had yeah. to do all that to try it all. Yeah. <laughs> and now I figured, this is my lane now, and this is what I want to do. Well, exactly. Every I'm a firm believer in, you know, like, everything happens for a reason, right? You know, I originally, I actually originally, when I was graduating, I wanted to um, go to school to become a camera operator. I wanted to be on film sets, because, you know, throughout high school, I was taking film courses you know making you know student films and mm -hmm. like i was like i just loved i loved being the director essentially and then i my stepdad who's been in the film industry for many many years he uh got me a, a gig interning on a film set you know just to get my feet wet and try it out and i just didn't like it wasn't even it wasn't even the fact that i was running and getting coffee i'm like i understand that you have to pay your dues in the beginning but right. it was just I just didn't like it. I didn't like the atmosphere. I just, it wasn't the film. I don't know. But I think what I liked about making films in high school was I had the control, you know, I was the the producer, essentially, the director, you could say. And now that I've kind of, you know, I've done, I've experimented with different things and I've tried different things out. And now that I'm actually producing records, it's, is I've found I'm com comfy. I'm found mm -hmm. you kind of like you try a bunch of things out in life and you kind of zero in on something. And once you and once you find that, you know, you just know as soon as like you, you wake up in the morning every day and like you're just you just want to do something. You want to yeah. do that thing, and it's, yeah. it's a great feeling, you know. And and to all those people out there who are, you know, they're like, oh, I'm lost. I don't know what I want to do. I'm gonna go to school for general studies the first year and then see what see what clicks. Right. Just keep trying. Keep trying different things until you find something you love. And once you find that passion, you'll know. Yeah. Oh, definitely. Yeah, Yeah, because I honestly, like when I first started doing all this, I never imagined I'd be a, a engineer and mm. mixing would be my favorite thing. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, I never, and when I was eight years old, I wanted to be a professional soccer player, you know? Yeah, yeah. Because I was like really into that. Oh, and I now, that? now I'm like, I'm 30 and I'm like, wow, like I absolutely love what I do, but I never thought this is what I would do. But it was because I tried a bunch of shit and just kept following it, following my curiosity, mm. following my curiosity. That's what it is, man. It's just rapping led to 
recording led to recording me led to recording friends led yep. to oh i really like this let's focus more on that let's go to school boom two track boom studio b here we are right now domino so. effect <laughs> domino effect yeah. yeah shit you're 30 mm-hmm. damn what's your secret do you eat a lot of carrots uh, <laughs> like, well, um, I, I was gonna say 25 <laughs> at most bro no i i don't know i try and exercise <laughs> well yeah that's probably what you should do yeah. go to the gym you know <laughs> my wife makes sure that we eat well and oh um i need a woman like that and just being <laughs> just being like like i said curious and interested and mm. like passionate man like that and in itself is like positivity that's your little life booster right there life booster <laughs> yeah, yeah that's my vitamin dude that's like, your keep the gray hair away right there mm-hmm. yeah no it's like oh man you see like people who are just stuck in like a job they hate mm-hmm. and it just shows they're just like weathered and man like uh, that was like my biggest fear when i was like graduating high school and you know just trying things out and just working construction and i was just like and i and you know like i don't know if you've ever like um worked in in the trades before but you just see those old timers there and they're like 50 but they look like they're 70 and oh, they're smoking yeah. every day and it's yeah, just dude. i'm like fuck is that gonna be me like yeah. I, it's just like i just yeah like i i right then and there i was like okay i gotta find something i gotta figure out what i want to do and you know like it's just I'm very blessed that I I found that so young, yeah. and that you found that so young, and yeah, it's just man. it's good to get on a path of not only not only doing getting into a career that's you know well paying and you know mm-hmm. doing this and that, but it's just finding something you love every day. If you can combine doing what you love every day with a nice income, it's just like well, there you go, man. <laughs> this is great. I put in way more hours than I charge people for but oh i, I think we fucking yeah. love it and i don't care yeah <laughs> <laughs> like yeah it's just know? it's so um, hard like it's so hard when like trying to like decide okay you like you put in so many hours and then you're like oh man okay i gotta charge for some of this you know mm-hmm, it's just like mm-hmm. you get especially when you have you ever had that feeling where you like you have an artist come through and they just bring such a hot record and you're just like you just put so many more hours into it than you charge for and it's just you're like man like I don't know. You, you gotta be careful. Like I, like that's what I kind of learned is like you gotta be careful to like take the hat off from like mu- passionate engineer music lover to like businessman. Yes. Yeah. You know, oh, that's yeah. hugely valid. That's a huge point that, yeah. that you said that. Yeah. Because um, it's not smart. You know. Yeah. Like I said, like I do put ridiculous hours into stuff, and and I know that I'm not getting what I'm worth. There's two sides to it. It's. Mm. I'm literally having the best time ever doing something I love. Yes, sir. On the B side, though, it's like, yes, I do need to get more efficient with the business side of things. Yeah, and, and, and totally. Not being, not being afraid to ask what I think I'm worth because I feel like I'll lose a client or something like that. Um, yeah, that's so a that's, big hurdle to get over. When that's a big hurdle, yeah. and that's taken, that's taken a while to get good at. You know, yeah. I'm still getting good at it. I, you know, yeah. all the time. We're, you know, we're all. You know, Denton and I are restructuring how we how we do things. You know, how are we gonna do this? How are we gonna do that? You yeah. know, we bunt, you know we have new gear now. We're we gonna up our rates. Always improving. Always like mm-hmm. talking about things and never being stagnant. Trying to try to improve and being more efficient all the time. But, well, exactly. Yeah. Um, it's tough to yeah when 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 I literally would do all this for free, put a price tag on all of it. That's that's the challenging part. <laughs> oh yeah. Yeah, and it, yeah, like what 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 you said earlier, just like you know, being that kind of fear in the back of your mind, like of like what like to put a rate, like okay, value what you're worth, and then you're kind of scared to say that because you're afraid of losing a client. Mm-hmm. But one thing, a friend, uh, a good friend of mine, Richard, who um I went to school with, um you know he's been he's been a businessman for a lot of years now, and he said, "You'll never win the war on price." Is what he told me. Is mm. there always be someone who's out there who will underbid you, you know, do it for cheaper and this and that. And it's just, you know, that doesn't mean, you know, just charge through the roof for, for your services, but charge what you think is fair and yeah. break down break down your pricing, justify it, and then just say, This is what I this is what I am, you know? Yeah. And really you the really good clients you want and the loyal clients won't have a problem with that at all i think so and I they'll stand so. by you yeah. and even if you know you have your, your sweetheart clients they were working with for a while and you say hey um 
you know, I'm I'm upping my rate a bit, the, this amount, and they'll be fine. I don't have a problem with that because yeah. they they know you and they trust you and they have that connection with you. Yeah. And it's the people that, and especially like a lot, I've dealt with a lot, is the people that are just gonna like just bitch and complain about your wall. I shouldn't pay that much, and you know, just like those are the people you don't really want to be working with. You know, it just kind of like you <laughs> see like a lot of red flags mm-hmm. in like an artist, like, and you know. I kind of got past the point where I'm like trying to argue with every person about, oh, why I have to charge this. And, you know, like, it's okay. And like, you know, having to validate yourself yeah. constantly. And yeah. it's a it's a bit of a morale shit kicker, hey? Like, just, like, it's like, it's just, it's so demoralizing sometimes. Always having, especially, you know, when I was just getting started, just like always having to justify. And then you're like, you kind of sit there after you're like, maybe I'm not worth that. <laughs> you know, <laughs> just that little voice gets in the back of your head. Yeah. But yeah. yeah. Yeah, man. Um, it's a it's a big learning experience, but I'm I'm yeah. I'm happy that I'm I feel like I'm getting better at it and, mm-hmm. and becoming more assertive and, oh, and totally. not being afraid to yeah to you know because you're not gonna like you said you're not gonna win every battle. There's yeah. always gonna be you're gonna lose some. There's gonna oh, be totally. someone who goes somewhere else. So you're and you're not gonna get every fish that you you know. If, exactly the fishing analogy you're gonna cast you're not gonna get a fish every time so it's yeah. just like yeah it's it's it ultimately like just be true to yourself and you know because you're gonna win some and lose some so yeah totally charge what you think you're worth and and those yeah. close those close clients those people that you like that work with you that that respect you like yeah they're in it for the long run and, oh for sure you know, they those I, I i'm happy to say that i have artists that i feel like I'm quote unquote growing with, mm. um, in the sense is where, where like if they if they make it they get to the next level like I can say I help br- yeah. bring them up you know exactly, um, we're yeah. a team like we're creating a sound together we're not just pressing record on Pro Tools yeah. and see you later it's there's a whole chemistry there there's a relationship we're it's all about the relationships whole, man we're building a style and a sound together and like that's. Mm that's super rewarding you know oh it's just and it's so nice just to just yeah exactly just to build a sound with someone you know and just it's like to build that like relationship with someone it's just crazy it's yeah it's very rewarding and it's like the one thing i hate is just like you know when a client walks and i've had clients in the past where like before they even open their mouth i'm just like i'm probably not gonna see you again like (laughs) it's just like (laughs) it's not for a fact that you know like i've done anything wrong per se Mm. it's just you know like they either, you know, they're not going to go anywhere or they're just, you know, ch- ch- jumping around, hopping in different studios. And it's just, you know, like, I'll, I'll gladly work with you and you'll help you. But it's just, it's so much better when you're working with someone who, you know, it's just like where you have that relationship. Where yeah. You, it's just, yeah. Yeah. Well, it's like, it's like any relationship. It's like dating a girl. It's yeah. Like- Mm, do I see where this is going? Yeah. Um, or do I not? Or do I see the end? Do I see the end of this already? And it's like it's mm. like that with clients. It's like, yeah, this this is a you know, come record, goodbye, thank you. Then yeah. you'll hop to another studio. Like, yeah. or is it um I'm vibing with this person, we're yeah, we're laughing, we're having a good time, we're that's just it. F- we're finishing each other's sentences, like <laughs> I was about to do a beat drop right there, but you, you know, you, you got to it first and it's like, wow, <laughs> like beat we're, you to it. <laughs> we're, we're, there's synchronicity here. Um, yeah. so yeah, I've got a, I've got a, a friend and, and client who, um, worked with a bunch and he's in Europe now and we're oh, still nice. in communication sending, he's, he's recording out there and working with people and sending me stuff mm. from the Czech Republic nice. to mix in Vancouver. And for me, a dude, that's like, client right there. Woo! Yeah, because um, I'm sure there are studios out in the check, right? You know, but the fact that you know he's, you're, you're his guy, man. I'm you his know? guy. You're his guy. I'm his guy, and we there's there's the trust there. There's the chemistry. Exactly. It's, like, it's all. It's, wow. Trust is a like, huge thing. Yeah. You know. Yeah. So yeah, just to 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 build that, I'm. Th- those are the ones I'm hanging on to. You know what I mean? Like, he. You know, when people say like, "You're my guy," like. You know, if I blow yeah. up, you're coming with me. Like it's like, wow. I like I f- when it when when I get instances like this, mm. I I feel like, hey, maybe they mean it. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you know, yeah. Like, cause, um, so that's that's beautiful. And ultimately, like that's what I'm trying to do. My grand my grand goal is to be a mixer. 
a mix engineer, that's what mm -hmm. I would love to do above everything. If I could just be here and people could send me stuff. Yeah. So that's where I'm trying to get to that, you know, that Manny Maraquin, Jason Joshua, Dave Pensado level where I'm just, I'm a mixer. I'm not miking drum kits for five hours and yeah. <laughs> you know um all those guys did that that's how they learned how yep. to eq and they learned you know phase and all that shit like okay. i get that that's part of this process but yeah for me like my my grand vision is to be exclusively a mixing engineer mm -hmm. yeah no that's so. the goal man you like if you love something It'll eventually come, you know, it's just that you got to put, you got to definitely put the work into it. And like, like you said, you know, all these guys started off, you know, grabbing coffee or miking drum kits and just doing the dirt. Mm -hmm. You have to mm -hmm. do the dirt, man. Like it's good. You have to do that for a while to get to where you want to be, you know, and it's just, yeah, there's no shortcut to it. There really isn't. And, you know, like I see, yeah. And like, I I can't really, you know, I can't really say shit because I've only been doing it for five years. It feels, it feels longer than that, but you know, like. I'm going to be doing it for a little, many more years to come, you know, yeah. <laughs> like, you know, it's, it's, it's wild, you know, just to think like that. Yeah. I don't know, man. It's just, you, there's no shortcut to it. Um, I see so many people like, like last year or the year before, you know, who are just getting into it. Cause you know, everyone like, there's like, everyone wants to be like a, a the hot producer beat maker. Mm -hmm. There's like a lot of clout behind it and mm -hmm. stuff. And then, you know, now they're not doing it anymore just because like the, Either they just lost interest or they're, like I said, they're trying in different things until they found that one thing that they love and it wasn't for them. Or they just realize that, hey, man, I have to put years into this. And it's just, you know, some people don't want to do that. And Dude, that's fine. You don't have to. Yeah. Right? Oh, yeah. But it's, I, I get what you, I really get what you're saying. Like where it's like, it's the trendy thing of the, of the moment. Mm. Um, I remember when I went to school and, um, you know, uh, some of the, some of my classmates, like. So I'm I'm coming to Nimbus with ten years of doing music prior mm -hmm. on my own. Um, That's good. I, re I released in, yeah. like four full length albums of my own work. Recorded tons of people in Victoria where I grew up. Performed, done music festivals, done clubs. Nice. Ten years of just being fully immersed in records and music, the whole thing. So I come to Nimbus because I want to improve my skills. And I was like baffled to meet some of my classmates who had no resume. Yeah. Like the resume was owning an iPod. You yeah. Know? And like, oh, man. I like, I don't know, that like offended me. <laughs> <laughs> I kind of see, yeah, I know, I kind of see what you're coming from, you know, it's just like, yeah, you get like, you're you're in class, you know, first day of class, and there's people who have like have no experience, and you know, like I'm not hating on them or anything, but it's just like the fact that it would, it's like uh, like it definitely helps. You need to have some kind of background, mm -hmm. you know, like. But I feel like a lot of people, you know, especially like, like people who like, have a lot of money to, just to blow on an education, they're just like with no experience. They're like, okay, I want to go do this, and then by the end of it, I'm gonna be I'm gonna be the man, right? I'm gonna be like a full blown producer. And yeah. it's just like, yeah, it's like first day in Ableton, like you're fucking like hitting the wall so quick, right? But it's, I was, I was honestly really happy that I had some kind of background to like, you know, recording and working in DAWs and, you know, just having a general knowledge, you know, of, of producing and then that kind of helped. But, you know, of course, you know, you for, when you really start getting into it, you get flipped on your head yeah. so quickly. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but yeah, no, it's just... It's crazy, man, for sure. It's good to, yeah, like we both came into it having uh, having the momentum there already mm -hmm. and having a pretty good idea of like, okay, I'm in this. I'm in this. Like I didn't feel like I was trying it out, like trying to become a massage therapist. Like yeah. I'm going to drop everything and try and do that. Like you're not starting from scratch. I wasn't starting from scratch. And a lot of my classmates were starting from absolute scratch. Yeah. And those ones aren't doing it anymore those uh, those three out of five those three out of five guys that in my intake that had zero that came in and they wanted to be swizz beats they came in they you know they yeah. wanted to be diplo or whatever like oh, i'm gonna be a producer because that's the hot thing right now yeah yeah i love those guys and i became friends with them and but i'm just saying like it, it <laughs> they had the wrong idea 
yeah. the wrong and the wrong intention oh let me try this out yeah. not in it for the long run not in it for the passion for the right reasons and they saw the tip of the iceberg they saw the tip of the iceberg holy shit this is gonna take a lot of fucking years to get good oh, at oh yeah so for sure um yeah i don't know what the point of what i was trying to say was there but i just wanted to share <laughs> that with you it's because, a podcast bro we can go um, off whatever way <laughs> because yeah it, um i'm glad that you know you and i both have got like a, a similar background and kind mm. of come from you know coming at this f- with with the same headspace you know mm-hmm. um yeah you, you ever so. have you have you had um any producers on the show before yeah uh mk the maker used to be mk ultra nice, um, nice shout out to ben like super super young super incredibly talented and nice. a super chatty kathy so he was great oh that was a Loved good guest. having him on yeah. the show yeah uh mk ultra who else have right we had on. producer wise like a lot of rappers a lot of rappers um i mean denton was on the show he's there you go engineer Throw producer um who has a who he had a great story of how he came up to it was really interesting and how he in, inherited the the building and two track and nice his whole world of interning and um really like for people trying to get into this um that's a really good inspiration story if you want to listen yeah. to the denton episode i'm gonna check that um, out for sure and then yeah and then we've had you know i've had a few people that are non-music you know art mm. visual art people photographers um my friend tiktok jake tiktok johnson that's one of his clocks there Oh, um, that's so that's he wild. does like graphic art and things like that. Um, so just, yeah. Um, but mostly, mostly people in the hip hop mm-hmm. world. Right. Um, and then, yeah, just had Scotty on, which was really dope. Right on. Um, so yeah, shout out Scotty, man. Scotty and yourself and Porter and myself. So all hey. everyone who was involved in the love like this single. So is that how you, is that how you came to hear of me uh, from that song or I'm just curious. Um, I just like, to know. yeah, I mean, well, I did all of Porter's self-made. Yes. Um, like all, all the recording and mixing and mastering. And right I on. think you produced a couple of songs on that. I'm pretty sure at least one. I believe so. Um, so that's where I heard about you originally from that from that and then nice. obviously the love like this um and i was like who is this guy like he makes he's made like more than one beat for you he's like oh yeah my boy e-world and i was like nah. it just <laughs> you had a, you had a sound that stood out from the rest of the producers for me i think because it Thank was a you. little bit more like my style just there's a little bit of an r&b element to yeah. your stuff that i really like it's not super heavy, just trappy. Mm. Um, well, that's what I'm trying to ch- diverge from. Like, I mm-hmm. remember, like, well, like, my early days of beat making was just all trap, all the same shit. And I'm just trying to, like, f- like I'm trying to, f- I'm trying to fucking make a pop record here and there. Yeah. You know? Like, I just, yeah. wanna, I just want to, <laughs> just like, I don't care what I make. I have no style. Like, yeah. it's all about what I'm feeling that day. Like, I'll make some like electronic sounding stuff, or some you know chopping soul Kanye kind of stuff. You know, whatever. Yeah. What you know, however, I have my coffee that morning. If I have a black or you know <laughs> cream and sugar, doesn't matter. Yeah. You know, just whatever, right? And it's just you know, I, like I, I was really happy to to make that beat for Porter because I remember it's like I just. I made that beat a while for love like this. I made that a while ago. I just started like literally I just started with like a four on the floor kick. Mm-hmm. And then I was like, okay, let's see where this goes. And then I was like, and then my, that was back when I was living at my mom's place. And my mom came into my studio, not my bedroom. I moved my studio down in the garage. Yeah. It's, it's official. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> and she came in, she's like, what's that? And I'm like, what? And she's like, I really like that. And I'm like, and I've, she's never, well, she's always like, she's proud of me. Obviously I love yeah. my mom. Yeah. And she loves me too. <laughs> and, Shout out to all the moms out there. <laughs> yeah, and she she's always been proud of me, but yeah. she's never walked into my studio while I was making something and being like, "I like that." And I'm yeah. like, "Okay." I'm like, "She, that's mm. a good sign," mm-hmm. you know. And like, because like she's always been very respectful. You know, she doesn't know if I have someone recording in there. You know, yeah. like really cool, cool parents. And um, and so I was like, I took that as a sign, and then like literally that night, I had. All like a couple of my homies over just to pre drink in the studio before we went out downtown. And I play, I was just like, you know, I always like play some just music in the background. And then, you know, I kind of just looked over, I just slipped it in there real quick without them noticing. And they're like, and they said, What's this? Like, yeah, this is the yeah, same thing. And I'm like, yeah. Okay, I'm like, I gotta give this out to somebody. So, yeah. 
And like I sent it out to Porter, and then he he sent me back that demo, just the hook, and I was like, oh my god, this is so good, yeah, yeah. like so it catchy, was a special one. And yeah. Scotty came in yeah. so proper on it, yeah, like holy shit, yeah, it's just very <laughs> Scotty ish, yeah. With the yeah, I, well, I was talking to him about this the other day when he was on that that he's he's really good at combining the the singing with the rapping like seamlessly into mm-hmm. the melodic and it just really really great style you know really it appeals to a lot of people i think i love what he's doing like i like his like recent work this year he's just really honing in like this is just my opinion he's really honing in on like a vision mm. and like a sound you know like and i really just like fuck hey like i can't remember the name of the song that's coming out or is already out now it's produced by two-tone sound i'm sure if scotty's listening to this right now he'll know but it was like i just saw it on his ig i'm like man like that's i like that's cool i just love his his flow and his voice and everything and yeah just, yeah, yeah, yeah. I found a lot. I found out a lot of interesting things about him on that episode, and that you mm. know, like his his father and grandfather are also very creative people. Mm-hmm. So he he was talking about how he feels like there's a legacy that he has to live up to, and that oh, he's for sure. he's like the next in line to do something special. And yeah, it was really cool. So Passing he, on the torch. He, he's, yeah, yeah, yeah. And he used to be a dancer and very <laughs> yeah, very, very creative that. and yeah, just just a really cool guy. Um, he's so, all in one man he's yeah like the, the, the Jackson the, 5 <laughs> like yeah, all yeah. in one you know? <laughs> yeah full package so yeah. Um, yeah so that that single turned out so good and I'm I'm, I'm proud to have been a part of that and um, everyone just brought their A game on that so mm-hmm. it was, Definitely. That was a really good Especially one. with the mix, too. Yeah. It sounded clean as hell, brother. Thanks, man. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, yeah, that was one of those ones where I killed myself because I was like, I had a feeling too, right? Like, like everybody who heard that beat was just like, "Oh, this is gonna be, this is gonna be a single. This is gonna get a lot more ears than oh, yeah. other stuff." So I gotta yeah. really bring my A game on this. So oh, for sure. And plus, you yeah. you hear that, and you're like, I've had that in cases where it's just like you hear that, and you're like, "Man, like I just gotta do the song justice, right?" Yes, you know, like that's what it is. Yeah, <laughs> justice. Yeah, I do it justice. <laughs> like I've been working yeah. on, I've been working a lot lately with uh, Young Ness, and um. We had a couple songs. We actually, the two songs that we're working on right now, um, I'm not going to spoil anything, obviously, because they're released, but he, we, we first recorded that a year, like last summer. Mm-hmm. And like the one song, um, oh, Stranger Things, I'll just say the name, I don't care. Um, and he, um, he recorded that. And it was just like the, what the version he had last year compared to like what we have now is just so different. And I'm just so ha- like so happy we spent like all that time. Like we, we haven't spent a year working on it. There's like a while where we just kind of we kind of forgot about it, and then now we jump back into it. And I'm just I'm like I'm like oh man, I'm just so happy we just like waited because it's just like it's insane. Like it's probably like my favorite record by him for sure. And it's one again, one of those things I've been just like slaving away on, you know, mm-hmm. just like we're doing a bunch of mixes on it, and like it's it's finally at the point where I'm like, okay, I'm like, I'm, we're feeling pretty good about it. So that expect some fire from Young Ness and E World coming out soon, and you know more to come. Um, but yeah, um, what my goal, honestly, like and like what I've been saying to a lot of people is, um, I'm not trying to totally get out of the recording mixing and engineering part of everything but i want to start actually beat making composing a lot more and just trying to get my sound out there to as many artists as possible because you know like especially like this year i felt like i've really hit my stride with you know like making good beats Mm -hmm. i remember my first beats were just oh man they're just awful and like and i was like and i'm just looking back like i was just like what are you doing man like i was like sending people packs of you know just like (laughs) you know just really repetitive loops and stuff and they're like oh it's pretty good man nice and you know like but now that i'm actually and it's cool like especially with the love like this track you know it's just nice like it was one of the first tracks of or beats i've actually made where I've given it to an artist and it turned into a full record and I'm like, wow, that's like, I helped make that. Mm-hmm. It's like almost like you're leaving like a bit of a legacy behind and it's just, you know, I want to chase the dragon on that essentially, you yeah. know, and, yeah. and yeah, you know, like I just want to start making more beats for more people and, you know, like I am essentially. So it's, I'm, I'm excited to see what the next year brings essentially. Where, where does your like music understanding and comprehension come from? Like when you're, laying down a baseline and then you know what 
keys to play on the piano like where does that come oh, from man, i'm gonna i'm gonna come clean right now homie i honestly have really no theory mm -hmm. um knowledge um like enough to be dangerous you know obviously like i've studied a bit in school but i just use like presets and stuff that put everything in in key and in scale so wow so yeah that's my confession you know sorry to all the people out there who have wronged and whatnot but <laughs> but um i don't know like i just Either if I start with just like some nice catchy chords or uh, just some kind of like, you know, top line melody. Yeah. And then I'll just usually, usually, usually it's either chords or some kind of melody and then the 808 and the, or the bass right away. Mm, That's okay. usually me because I find like, obviously like, you know, and that's, you know, have your own opinion on it. But if for me in a hip hop record, it's always about, it's for, let's say the beat, it's always about the melody of the beat and the bass is the two p things that kind of p grab people's ears. Cause I mean, obviously drums yeah. and percussion, you know, that's carries the beat, so to say, but you know, it's all people love bass. They love nice, lo fat, low end, but you know, it also has to have like a nice melody to it. I don't know. Those are my two big things. That's how usually how I start with something. Um, just like a nice catchy melody and then the bass right away. But I don't know, like, um, as far as like, well, how do I know what to, I don't know. It's just what, like, I just, sometimes close my eyes and just feel it yeah like i really can't say there's like a rule to making music obviously there are guidelines and whatnot but i judge how i'm gonna make a beat when the hairs on my neck stand up if that, <laughs> i don't know if that makes any sense you know just like if i'm feeling it i'm feeling it if i'm sitting there you ever have a, you're making a beat and you're just like you're trying to feel it you're trying to like vibe with it and you're just like you you try to force yourself to vibe with it yeah. i just throw it away yeah. i just can't do that but if i'm just like if i'm just dancing in my studio and you're like wake up my roommate at like two in the morning i'm like just come to listen to this real quick and yeah. they'll like just it's it's, it's undeniable insidious, right? right yeah yeah, when you're trying to nod your head to it or oh, like yeah. EQ it because it's not working, that's when it's fallen apart or it's just not yeah. working to begin with. It should just yeah. work with all the faders at zero and no compression or EQ. It should just yeah. sound like it's all there and then go and polish it after, right? Yeah, well, exactly. Yeah. You know, like it's, I've heard songs and especially from like a lot of um, local artists, you know, who don't really have proper mixing skills and knowledge. But if I hear a demo and like the mix is really bad, but if I just hear the song, like, the actual composition, I'm like, wow, this is amazing. Mm -hmm. And like, you know, like a good song will stand above a shitty mix you every can, day. Oh, you can overlook it. Definitely. Oh, of course. Yeah. 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 Obviously, you know, if you wanted that to hit the radio, you gotta, you know, you gotta play ball. Right. Yeah. You gotta but, send it to Max to Shaw. First. Yes. Yeah. For show, for show. <laughs> little plug in there. <laughs> Shameless plug. Yeah, yeah. But yeah, you know, it's just, it's all about how it makes you feel. And that's like, so like some of the, the knowledge that wasn't in the curriculum mm -hmm. when I went to school is just like, you know, just like my teacher, my, one of my other pro tools teachers, um, Mike Rogerson, who's, um, you know, been producing for decades now, you know, he's just, oh, we, we always call them Mike talks, you know, just like life lessons and little kernels oh, of no. knowledge and mm -hmm. just how, you know, like just, uh, you know, be likable, you know, you gotta do this. And, um, you know, if you're if you're assisting in a session, you know, just write down your questions and save them for later. And, you know, just don't, you know, I've I just know one, one, yeah, I just yeah. all those little tidbits of knowledge yeah. and, you know, and it's just, yeah, like it's like we're not in the music business, we're in the emotion business. Totally, I feel like, yes. like you know, if like you have, especially when you're you're finding yourself in a mix and you're kind of getting you're like kind of getting tired and bored and you're like oh man, and then you make some moves and then the energy is right back up and you're just loving it again. It's just like it's so it's i don't know we just have to convey emotion you have to it's all about getting the listener to feel something right you know and if you're you know we as producers and mix engineers we do that by making moves in the mix to make it exciting and yeah. really impactful and artists do that you know with like you know their songwriting and you know melodies and blah 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 you know it's like every we, every trade has and, their trick yeah. For yeah. Sure. Oh yeah. Yeah. But the, the, the idea that a mix can actually make you feel a certain way. It's cool. Um, it's is very cool. Really, really cool. And I never understood that until, you know, I still, I, until I really started getting deep into uh -huh. what I'm doing now and realizing, yeah, like just by automating something or 
yeah. turning it up a decibel in a certain spot or yeah. whatever, like that triggered me subconsciously to feel a certain way while I'm listening to it. Um, and then people that have abs- you know, just the average person that is mm-hmm. not involved in music at all, that's just a consumer listening to it, you're actually triggering them. They don't even know it yeah. by the way you've mixed the song. Like it's still the song and it's still the lyrics are there, but the sonics, yeah, right? The sonics are doing something to someone. And that's such a great, when you realize that, like that it's a magic that you can actually put magic into the record that yeah, wasn't there before. Breathe and pump life into it essentially, yeah. right? And it's just, it's, yeah, it's very, very cool to like, you know, like how to, how to do that. And that's, you know, again, that's where like a, a psychology degree would be so mm. cool just to have, you know, like as a, producer or artist or whatever just to know how to trigger emotions or just yeah just it's an emotion business really you know like and it's like and the same goes with really any form of art any medium right Mm. it's all about how like what does the audience or the viewer consumer feel Mm -hmm. and the moment yeah the moment when i started kind of learning that kind of stuff is when is when I got a little better, <laughs> you know? <laughs> just, you know, like, oh, this is technically, this is really cool. Oh, it's for this compressed and it's EQ'd properly, yeah. and, you know, blah, blah, blah. And, and then, like, I'm trying to explain to, the, to like, my homie or my yeah, client or whatnot right. that it's good, and rather they're, like, not feeling that it's good. You're just trying to convince them that, you know, oh, like, a, it's technically satisfactory, you know? Yeah, but, this is on paper, this yeah. is EQ'd correctly. Yeah, exactly. How does it actually make you feel? Like, yeah. is there too much 200 in that snare? Do I, did, did I need to do that? Yeah. That's something I've been doing more lately is trying to just mix not quickly but the first round of a mix i'll just i won't focus on why did i i don't i don't normally boost more than 4 db Mm. i'm gonna boost it 6 db this Mm. time or i'm gonna cut this a lot just whatever i feel right not so much like having got parameters in my head of what i should and shouldn't do I'll, i'll go back and tweak it after but just more mixing with on the go with feeling, right? Mix with your heart, not with the ears. <laughs> Mix with my heart, not yeah. with my eyes. Right. Okay, you know? hey, um, <laughs> when you're watching TV, do you, when you're turning up the volume, do you ever turn it to like, like instead of 19, do you turn it to like 20? Like yeah. to like those numbers? Yeah. I used to do that so much yeah. when I was like mixing and just like, instead of just like, okay, it sounds good here, but no, I'm going to turn it to 650, you know, or like, it's like at nine point three decibels, yeah. oh, let's put it to an even 10, you know, just because, uh, I don't know why I did that, just because it's just, satisfying that's or the just, kind of thing i'm yeah. talking about yeah yeah, to, yeah for some ocd reason or whatever yeah. yeah you know you just like you think like you're 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 overthinking stuff and like i i wish i could control pro tools with my mind that way i can just mix with my <laughs> eyes closed right you know like if you're not looking you're yeah. just kind of like going like really and like you said just like doing like a what feels good kind of move on you know just make quick moves mm-hmm. don't overthink it too much overthinking really killed a lot of my like mixes early in the day Sure. And just, you know, like, just sticking with the YouTube tutorial too much. Oh, if that guy, he, oh, he boosted this at uh, this range, <laughs> at this amount of decibels, I'm like, I have to do the exact same thing. Right. And it's just like, just use your ears. I'm, you've, I'm sure you've heard like a million times over the years and in a million YouTube videos, use your ears. But you, when you actually start doing that, you're like, wow, I should have been using my ears. Absolutely. <laughs> that the, One of the big things that, I've done all all throughout the years without even realizing it is I always have like my laptop with something visual going on on it mm. on silent. Um, huh. It there's a, there's a few reasons that I do it, but one of it is just I like the atmosphere. It's kind of like having like oh, the TV yeah. on in your living room and there's like the lights flashing and there's just it's something there. It's a presence. Yeah. Um, but another part of it that i find super beneficial is when i'm mixing i'll just take my eyes off of pro tools and the oh yeah reverb or the compressor that i have there and i'll just i'll listen to what i'm working on but watch something watch what's on the computer Mm -hmm. on the screen and i'm i hear i step away from focusing in on the numbers and the and and like the dials and i'm actually just listening to it right um it, it creates this like separation where i'm just listening to it as a consumer that way yeah I'm fo- my eyes are focused on what's on the laptop whatever it is and then i'm just hearing it and i hear it in a whole different way like i from another perspective um so i always do that and people you know natasha and jose and denton all think i'm crazy because i'm always 
watching something on yeah. here but never listening to it and they're like what the hell is he doing yeah. but that's kind of like my little i don't know my trick that i do yeah, right your I little have detachment or my little detachment yeah. from the pro tool screen yeah and yeah no the same thing if i'm really like at home and you know my studio or like mixing and it's like one of the most like not uncomfortable but like tense parts for me is mixing in front of a client because mm. usually i much prefer i don't know if you're the same way but i much prefer just to mix by my own and send them something and have them you know send me like over list of revisions. but yeah, yeah like and they'll see me and they'll just be like mixing and be like <laughs> for those people who can't see this right now i'm looking down on my lap and like <laughs> i just look down or close my eyes yeah or they're like are you okay like the, this one guy actually was just like Yo, E World, you all right? And I'm just like, yeah. yeah, no, I'm just mixing. And like, you know, it's just. Oh, because you're closing your eyes, yeah. listening, yeah. or whatever. Or just like, or, yeah, I'll be like yeah, this, yeah, like, see, just like looking at the wall. And they're like, was one guy is just like so ripped and he's just like looking, like, <laughs> looking at the wall, like, what's he looking at? And I'm just yeah. like, no, so I'm just, I'm just, yeah, I'm, I'm zoning in. <laughs> yeah. Not zoning out. But yeah, you definitely just like, it's so like easy, yet so hard to do. Like, it's just to kind of stop thinking about it, look away. Listen, actually listen. Don't just li like pretend to listen or say, "Oh, okay, I listen to it." No, but like it's just to actually like listen and absorb it and be like, "Okay, I like that. That's making me feel excited." Mm -hmm. But this is kind of okay. Where did that excitement leave? And just to be able to like identify those things, like when, to, what in throughout the song or in the mix, when was it hot and when was it really exciting? Okay, and when did that drop off and why? Right. And it's just if we can identify those things, then you're cool you're you're dope <laughs> yeah because sometimes you can over mix it too right oh and man. undo something undo progress that you've made um yeah i really like to do save as that's a like big one 1.1 1.2 1.3 like i have yeah i'm like embarrassed to show you some of the amounts yeah. of points that i have like 14 point you know stuff I've done the same. over the years before yeah. i was efficient i would just go crazy right i'd have yeah. a million versions right but yeah um so that in, i do that so that if i do go too far and i fucked it up and i lost the chemistry of the mix yeah. i can go back to 2.3 well that's just um, that's just really that's like it's good to to like be safe like that you know mm -hmm. like you ever like have like a song like like back in the day when you're or mixed back in the day where you're just like it's the final mix but it's just like the same session as like the very beginning and like I mean like hey whatever gets you there right but <laughs> at the same time I'm I'm yeah. I'm like the kind of person I love to I love to do a save as yes. like every stage of the process mm -hmm. and over mixing is like is 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 funny because like. You know, like me as like kind of learning and like being a novice, you know, over the past few years, you know, like I always thought like I had to do a lot of things to make it sound good. And, you know, like if I didn't do that, if it sounds great, but I only have like not a lot of processing going on, I feel guilty. I feel like I'm not doing you my didn't job. Do your job. Yeah. Or if like, if I, you know, like producing a record for a client and I just have like an EQ, some compression, some effects on the vocal chain, and I'm like, I almost feel guilty taking their money because it's just like I'm not doing enough. But man, like it's just sometimes like you just you just do too much and it just it's it's gone. But part of your like, part of what they're paying you for is the expertise and knowing yes. what knowing when to add more salt and when it's already salty enough. Exactly. Yeah. Um, and if you've got if someone sent you something that's recorded well, oh, man. you don't need to throw the multi band on and the really yeah. corrective EQ and a ton of shit. Like it's you can mix, not fix. You can just mix it and yeah. pop, you know, wow, that's sounding pretty popping already, right? Oh um, man, like okay, to all the like artists and like are <laughs> people out there who are listening to this. Send your producer some really good recorded stuff, <laughs> like just like and really acoustically well, like yeah. on time. Make sure your deliverables are sent properly, yeah, yeah, and they will love you for it. Like it's yeah. just, you know, like I it's so so many times where it's a shame where like the song is so cool and like I'm just loving it, but it's just like the, the room they recorded in their bedroom and it's just yeah. awful. Like it's start really good from the source for sure, and like that's that's half the battle right there. Yeah, then you're just throwing up you know levels yeah your level mixing and then maybe adding some stuff yeah it's creative it's, moves and yeah mm -hmm. you know like yeah it's very 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 worth it to invest in acoustic treatment for sure and a good microphone as well yeah yeah but 
yeah, that's one thing over the years that I've gotten more and more and more obsessed about is p- just capturing a tone mm-hmm. with the microphone to begin with. You know what I mean? Yeah. Instead of just being lazy and, you know, all right, get in the booth. Is it high enough? Good. Let's start recording. Like, yeah, I've started to really obsess over like inches and like space and just Mm -hmm. listening doing more warm-up takes and being like okay it sounds fuller here like or boost the gain or you know um i've got a like a dbx uh channel strip now with with compression in it as well Mm. and a noise gate so just really fiddling with that first so that i don't have to worry about the mix so much after yeah because i've spent years dealing with lazy recordings that i'm guilty of myself yeah and when i do get something that's recorded well it's just it's such a breath of fresh air it's such a relief oh it's just so nice and like and like i feel like especially like in the beginning too like a lot of the time like i was so scared to like record with eq and compression and stuff Mm. because oh man i'm so scared i'm gonna mess it up you know you know like you you record in with that it's it's committed right you know you can't undo that yeah but you know it's all about trying stuff, trying new things, trying new techniques, you know, like even, even now I'm just like starting to like, okay, just try a bunch of preamps on a person, Mm. try a bunch of which compressor sounds the best, you know, just try stuff. Don't be afraid to do it. And I mean, you know, like, but that, that being said, you know, if like, be careful when you're doing it, you know, like don't just over compress something to no end. Mm hmm you know, on the way in and then you're like, Oh, well, sorry. It's, you know, like, you know, just be, you know, <coughs> yeah. compress responsibly. Yeah. <laughs> you know, <laughs> you know? Compress yeah. responsibly. Yeah, yeah. Cause like you said, that's, it's committed at that point. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Um, and when you're first experimenting with that stuff, experimenting with EQing on the way in and compressing, yeah. like it better sound good. Cause yep. otherwise you kind of overcooked it. Right. Exactly. Like burnt the toast and at that point. So. And it's kind of fine if it's just, do you know you're doing it on your own by or for yourself or for a friend but you know it's a whole nother story if it's for a client right yeah you gotta be you gotta be responsible you gotta you know make sure you're not you gotta you gotta be very aware of what you're doing for sure what's some uh, of your favorite gear that you're using right now um i honestly got my first real piece of gear um last year after i graduated the apollo um twin or sorry yeah the apollo quad core and um i don't know i just like I just got it and I just love the UAD plugins. Like, just like, oh man, it's just going from, I don't know, like just they're all throughout school. You know, I'm still slowly accumulating stuff for my studio. Yeah. Um, but just, I was like salivating the whole year over, you know, like gear and what, what preamps I should get and stuff. But, um, yeah, no, really that's like, I, you know, like I have a pretty, uh, pretty chill setup at home, like nothing too fancy, just like, uh, that, that Apollo interface, um, some Yorkville speakers and Pro Tools. Are you I, recording with the, uh, um, with the UAD plugins on the way in? Because you know how you can do that. You can commit with the plugins. Yeah, as if it was gear. Is that something you've That's experimented? That's the whole with? reason I bought the thing. Right. Just because, okay. like, I was like, you know, like I'm like, okay, obviously I want to go gear crazy and spend all this money on gear, which I don't need. <laughs> Uh, and um but i was like to have an interface where i can only have it comes with plugins but like they act like real gear like yeah. record through a compressor plugin and it'll compress i was like oh man like what a time to be alive right it's amazing and it's it's just it's really nice and honestly sometimes i record with it sometimes i just go completely dry sometimes i use um some of the preamp emulations sometimes nothing right but recently what i've kind of like what i've liked um recording with is uh, I'll, like, I'll record through like an LA two way, just tickling that gain reduction a bit, nothing yeah. crazy, mm-hmm. and then uh, a pull tech just to boost some air, just to make it a little brighter, and just that way it's just sounding just a little beefier. Yeah. Um, but other than that, really, I don't go too crazy on the way in. Like, I just prefer to just like play it safe for the most part. But at the same time, you know, like I'll take the time and see what sounds good as far as compression. But I like to just kind of do all my stuff in the mix where i can you know take it on and off right yeah yeah especially with the eq i think because that yeah. same pull tech you can put it back on the vocal chain after yeah exactly um the the compression on the way in is great to prevent clipping and stuff like that and control mm-hmm. the, you know the dynamics um but uh i've been guilty of you know 
over EQing and oh, yeah. boosting. When I, I remember when I first got the my my Apollo, um, my UAD Apollo, and I was messing with those UAD plugins yeah. and stuff. And yeah, there were Go luckily it was like stuff I was doing for myself. I wasn't <laughs> yeah. for clients, but I I got a little bit too friendly with <laughs> some of those and yeah. recorded stuff that was overcooked on the way in and i was like well i can't use that that's too bad yeah but luckily like i said it wasn't for like a paying session or anything like yeah. that but i was experimenting overly well experimenting. that's what you have to do right yeah. <laughs> try stuff overdo it mm -hmm. okay i overdid it underdo yeah. it a bit you yeah. know just yeah. yeah yeah it's just it's when you for the first day you get that apollo interface mm -hmm. you're just going crazy with recording on the way in with all this stuff it's it's pretty yeah i know it's really good um but yeah other than like really i don't really have like any other gear at home i just i built a lot of my own acoustic panels and just Sweet. made a really good sounding room and i have a warm audio uh 47 junior mic and you know it's not the most expensive mic but it sounds pretty good and that uh, works for me man it's just good sounding room good mic run it through a good pre and do the rest in the box you know and what what do you like to use in the box do you have like the slate stuff the fab filter waves what are you using mostly all three all, all of those oh, yeah? yeah no i got um the fab filter stuff is really good i usually i find myself really only using like the uh, pro q2 and the limiter just for mastering at the end but um yeah a lot of waves plugins um i'm a big fan of the slate uh digital stuff i love um I their remember. distressor emulation mm -hmm. and and yeah, and some, you know, some um, UAD stuff and uh, some of the isotope stuff. Like I just like the only, the only isotope plugins are, um, I have like the RX, um, not the sweet version, just like the, the free version, but just like, I just love the de-clicker and um, denoising de plugins and just like, it's just, mm. just good for like just cleaning up recordings yeah, yeah. and that kind of stuff. But yeah, really, I'd say like, Slate digital waves UAD um and a bit of fab filter. And even then, you know, like I just don't use all of them. Sometimes it's just I try different things. I always like try to like once a week just try new stuff. Like I, I get so comfortable with like of like a vocal chain, for instance. Yeah. Just like I get so comfortable just using the same techniques, the same stuff every time. But I'm like, I have to like force myself, to, like smack myself on the face, and be like, okay, Eli, wake up, like let's try something new, you know? Yeah, and let's just, rebuild this. Yeah, 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 just tear it down, rebuild it. Didn't work. Do something new. I don't know. Just just try stuff. That's all you got to do, right? What about on the mix bus? Are you a fan of? putting lots of stuff not a lot of stuff um, or does it depend i usually put i like i like doing a bit of bus compression and like a, some minor eq eqing boost or dips or whatever but um um i do i honestly on the mix bus i do use um that i can't remember what it's called um this oh, it's in the slate digital it's um the uh, actual mix bus thing it's the gray one i can't i'm totally oh, blanking the on the mix name bus yes i'm yeah. totally blanking on the yeah. name of it yeah and then sometimes um sometimes i'll run it through a, a tape uh emulation just to you know saturate it a bit but i really don't find myself doing much stuff on the mix bus i like to do stuff on the actual source tracks i like i i find myself like I like I run like I use like a lot of like auxiliary tracks for vocals and stuff. Just like you know, I'll run all the all the lead vocals to one track and then have that going to another aux or like yes. and yep. just like just doing like for instance, what I'll do on all those all those um all those buses for the vocals, I'll do like a lot of uh, mid side EQing on the actual vocals them themselves because when I first kind of started playing around, you know, with mid side mid side EQing was just in mastering, right? Just mm -hmm. like trying, oh wow, that sounds so cool. But like, you know, I just started I'm like started doing it right on the vocal tracks themselves just to kind of make them stand out a bit more. Or like um I don't know, like it's kind of hard to break down my process right now because it's just like everything depends so much on the actual song and the yeah. mix itself. Mm -hmm. But yeah, I'm a big fan of just doing a lot of little moves instead of like I know some people when they mix they do like a lot of like they less plugins and more big bigger broad stroke moves. Sure. But I like to just like I use like to use like multiple compressors just like in very like minute um like I like I just like to do a lot of like little things as I go. Like I don't like to 
you know, just like commit and took a bunch of like big moves at the beginning. So like I'll use like 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 lots of stage lots of stages of mild compression and just EQing as I go and I don't know. Just a lot of stuff. Do you find that helps <laughs> with your gain staging? Or do you find that that's a challenge still? Especially with the low end, like eating up a lot of headroom going into the mix bus. Like how how do you go about gain staging, especially with your if you're using like um, like you said, like buses for all the vocals, buses for all the instruments? Like, yeah, I know. I could definitely like when I was first starting off, like I was like wondering why everything was just sounding so awful, like just because I because I was still doing the same thing back then, where you know doing a lot of stages of different things, but it was by the end of it, it was clipping so hard, and like I don't know, I just I do it to where I um I like mix I use a I use a plugin to where it sounds good, but then I'm very very careful of the output of going into the next plugin, and it's just mm. I don't know like I'd have to be in front of Pro Tools right now, you know, <laughs> just to kind of like go through it a bit. But I don't know. It's just I find I don't know. I, it's all about finding a sweet spot for like a yeah. plugin or a piece mm -hmm. of gear, really. But um, once you have an understanding of gain staging. You're not really gonna run in, or at least myself, you're not gonna really like run into problems gain staging because you know, like now that I'm just aware of, you know, being careful of like how I'm hitting every plugin and right. every bus and whatnot, and it's just just be mindful of it, you know, like going to the next bus. Okay, what's it? What's what's it coming out at? And oh, should I boost it a little more? Like um, reduce the gain a little more, and just I don't know. And it's also too like it's just what sounds good you know i've like clipped some plugins and i'm like and i'm like oh it's clipping i turned down i'm like it doesn't sound as good so i'll just like you know fuck it right <laughs> yeah just not just close your damn eyes and does it sound good great leave yeah it. <laughs> yeah exactly <laughs> and you know like i've like had sessions where i just like i've gone so crazy with just you know like so many vocal tracks going to so many buses going into so many like you know sub mixes and just like so much crazy shit to the point where I don't even like you don't really need to do that. And then I've had sessions where it's just like you know a few tracks going to the master. That's it. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's, yeah. it just all depends, you know. Like sometimes you can get fancy and go hard, and sometimes you just keep it simple. I mean, it all depends on what you want to go for, really. What I've really started kind of liking to do now, especially for background vocals, is just um running them through guitar amps mm. and then. Um, you know, rolling off a bit of the high, a lot of reverb, and it just because I was like, I love the sound of like a background vocal, you know, just like a lot of reverb in it, so it just pushed in the back into the mix. But just I was like, I still can't get it to stand out the way I want it to. Yeah. So I try running it through some different amps and see what sounds good. And it just the way it just runs through that amp and distorts, it just it doesn't sound crunchy. I mean, I I could set it to you know whatever setting if I wanted to sound crunchy, but. I don't know. It just it just gives it that bite, and it just makes it just pop out that much more. And it just gives it like as a young Ness refers to the rock star back ad libs. You just yeah, love see, yeah. and especially with that new track I was talking about that's coming out. You know, we tried that, and it just poof, just like the back, like his ad libs just sounded so much better. And especially with, like with like auto tune ad libs and just and through a guitar, guitar amp, amp. Yeah. it's cool. I don't know. I just like. Try experimenting with stuff. You know, I've no would never last year think of running vocals through guitar amps. I'm like, what? You can't do that. It's not allowed. I just but, started doing that with yeah. with an artist actually. Not on that. Not on the ad libs or yeah. uh, backgrounds, but like on a a little singy part, like on the bridge, and just yeah. put the Sans amp plug in on it and just yeah. destroy it. And it's not a vocal anymore, but it's just like. It's something, and it sounds it's cool, textury, and we just drench it in it's like, like an instrument, a, the little itself. plate, you know, and yeah, yeah, and it just becomes this whole new thing. That's like I don't know what it is, but I like that sound. It's making me feel something. It's yeah. interesting. It's like a production move in itself, you know. Like you're turning it's just from like okay, it's like it was a little singing part, and now it's just something completely yeah. not from this world, and it just works, yeah. right? And it's it's very cool, and like I just love. Like, I wish I had a studio full of analog gear because I love just, like, all, like, I love all the Slate stuff. I love all, like, the, like, um, analog emulated gear, mm -hmm. like, tape machines. I'd fuck, man, I'd love to, like, actually try working, like, running through a tape machine. I mean, like, it's so much more convenient to have the plug-in, right? Just like, instead of actually having, you know, to work with tape. But it's bucket list for sure. That's one thing I really want to try <laughs> is, like, learning how to align a tape machine and sure. try it, you know? like. Yeah. But I, yeah, I just, um, I don't know. I could talk about mixing and like, like what I use for just hours and stuff. But 
what I've really, really, um, the microphone, or my next big purchase I want to make is um, the uh, Townsend Labs microphone. I don't mm. know if you're familiar with it. It's it's a very similar to the Slate um, virtual microphone system. Okay. It's like, you know, just you can emulate stuff, but you can... Um, you could control the recording. You can control the the polar pattern after a recording. What? And it's just it's. I was like, what? So even like it just blew my mind. And like, it's just so nice, so crisp. And it, it has like a little. It almost like an aesthetic part of the microphone. I really like. It has like a little light that turns on. Okay. So the microphone glows. And does it come with <laughs> like software mic emulations after you've oh, actually yeah. recorded? Yeah. Yeah. And yeah. it's it's com- it's meant to it's compatible with um UAD stuff. It works like with um in console and stuff. Okay. And it comes with like you know the whole you know like your Neumanns. Um, like Sony microphone, like yeah. just like you know, all the famous mics, right? Sure, sure. And it's just, oh, it's just really, really, really awesome. And like I was actually considering, you know, like my next big, I was like, you know, salivating over the uh, the Slate mic because I like used it at school. I'm like, wow, this is so cool. I could like all these microphones in one. Yeah, we have it downstairs. It's, it's a great microphone. Yeah. It yeah. sounds great. I've even just recorded not going into any other microphone emulation. Just. It's not bad sounding itself, like on yeah. some people, I should say. Not, you know, it depends, but you know, like um, definitely check out the Townsend Labs microphone. It's my little plug for them for tonight. It's it's really <laughs> it's really cool, and that's why my teacher has a, a studio now. Yeah, that's the microphone these guys were using tonight, and uh, it's just it sounds great. Oh, and very just cool. it, the polar pattern changing, like you can change it after recording. It's just I was like, it blew my mind. Yeah, it's really interesting. That's like going backwards in time. I don't know how they figured that out. Yeah, it's very very cool. <laughs> But yeah, it's it's a, it's a very interesting. Yeah, it's uh it's pretty neat. I'll give you that. Um, I don't know. I, that's that's my gear rant for tonight. That's that's great. No, that's <laughs> I I'm I'm just always curious about that, and I don't get a lot of like fellow engineer slash producers on the show that mm. we can like. Like I hope we haven't bored people too much talking about plugins <laughs> for the last twenty <laughs> yeah. minutes, but yeah, it it satisfies my curiosity. So oh, thank yeah. you for sharing that. Oh, of course, man. And talking about your chain and stuff like that. Um, yeah, for sure. Well, let's wrap this up because I think we're pushing a new record here, maybe oh, for man. the show. <laughs> yeah, there you go. Um, I got you talking about plugins and stuff. <laughs> yeah, we could just go. We could do a plug-in episode. Um, yeah, honestly, there you a go. mixing episode. Um, where can people check out your new work and people that you've been working with stuff? Like, is it on SoundCloud? Do you have a, a website? Where where should people go? Well, first off, you can follow me on Instagram at eWorld Records. Um, I usually have everything in my um, in my bio on there right now. It's uh, Love Like This with Porter and Scotty out. Um, other than that, I really just, I, I hide behind my artists, you know? Mm-hmm. Like, I, I have... Um, I have stuff coming out with Young Ness soon, uh, stuff coming out with uh, Z Sean here and Jody at Prezi Sound, and more to come from more people. So be able, be sure to check me out on Instagram, at UWorld Records, follow me. And um, yeah. That's kind of the hub then. That'll, yeah. that'll have links to, to your stuff. Yes, sir. Um, photo updates of the studio. I noticed something that you did on your Instagram story highlights where you have your rates and things like that, mm. um, which I thought was such a brilliant idea. And Thank I'm thinking you. about stealing that because... Do it. I stole um, it. <laughs> yeah, it's great. Like, it's it was just so organized and accessible and it's right there. It doesn't disappear. Yeah. People can... Because sometimes you can't fit everything in your little Instagram bio That's snippet just it, thing, yeah. right? Yeah, yeah. And you know, I was having people like always like getting a message every day or every other day be like, what are your rates? What are your rates? And I'm just like... I don't mind telling people that, but I just yeah. kind of got tired of, you know, mm-hmm. just always, I'm like, so I just wanted to, like, as soon as you open up your Instagram, you can just see, okay, rates, there's, you know, studio pictures, blah, blah, blah. Yeah. Honestly, I may need to go through all the highlights and just kind of, you know, update everything and, you know, make it look a little pretty and whatnot. But yeah, Instagram is definitely my hub. It's, uh, it's great. Yeah, it's my platform. Perfect. Yeah, an amazing tool. <laughs> yeah, for sure, have. for sure. Um, you go like my little Zan uh, costume. I saw that. <laughs> oh, I everyone, saw that. I like. I hardly recognized you. My God. I know. Like I had like jazz meat, and you know, like everyone like, commenting on it, saying like you could actually like kidnap young or uh, little Zan and like go perform for him. And like Trey Six Peak actually DM'd me my photo. Shout out to Trey, and he's just saying like he just like 
just it was great. And I was like, wow, all these people are just like loving my costume. So I actually that was like the first Halloween costume in like years that I've actually really enjoyed. Yeah. Yeah. Like I yeah. don't know why. So maybe I should go work with Lil Zan. Inspired something. Hey? Yeah. Maybe it brought out a personality that you didn't know you had. Yeah, I can always start <laughs> rapping. Who knows? Get back in the Get game. back on the mic, maybe. Yeah. Funny shit. Yeah. Um cool dude. Thank you so much for doing this. Thank you for having me, man. This it was very been... nice to meet you and check yeah, out your studio and good be to a, meet be you finally in person after like you know hearing each other's stuff working yeah. with similar artists so you know um let's continue to you know bring the community to, together share ideas oh yes send people over here i'll send people to you let's let's just keep working build in vancouver exactly um, i'm always looking for people to work and rise up with yeah know? like i want to I it's all about building a team, working together, right? Teamwork make the dream work for sure. Hundred percent. Yeah. There you go. Let's, thank you let's very leave much. it at that. E World, everybody, thank you so much for listening and hope you're having a great week. We'll talk to you soon. Peace. See you later, boys.